Okay, so we'll begin. And as uh, as we go, uh, Thaneeth, I'll be uh, admitting people as well. Okay, that's good. So thank you everybody for joining us today. The Border Crossings Project is presented by the Art Gallery of Mississauga and is generous, generously funded by the Ontario Trillium Foundation through the GROW Grant, the Ontario Arts Council, and the City of Mississauga's Cultural Division. Borders are challenges faced physically, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. They both connect and divide, shared by the art of storytelling. Recognizing and sharing these border crossings allows us to understand ourselves and others differently. Instead of groups of people separated by arbitrary distinctions, we are all individuals who experience pivotal moments of change that shape the contours of the narratives of our lives. Come and explore these stories. So I'd like to start um, to begin by acknowledging the land on which we gather in which the region of Peel operates. It's part of the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. For thousands of years, Indigenous peoples inhabited and cared for the, this land. In particular, we acknowledge the territory of the Anishinaabe, Huron-Wenda, Haudenosaunee, and Ojibwe Chippewa peoples, the land that is home to the Métis, and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Fir Credit First Nation, who are direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land and by doing so, give our respect to its first inhabitants. We continue to respect this land as we move forward with today's workshop. This workshop is being recorded so that we can post it to YouTube after for those who would like to attend afterwards. I'm going to launch a poll for a minute. Please answer the questions. And this poll is just to find out um, if you've attended a workshop before and also where you are joining us from. Now, as I said before, if you do not want your face to be shown, you can turn off your camera. At the end of the workshop, we will be asking you to turn on your camera so we can take screenshots of your works. If you don't want your face to be seen during that time, feel free to hold your art in front of your face. If you have any questions during the workshop, please raise your hand or type it in the chat box. I'd prefer if you type it in the chat box and then that way I can ask Thaneeth um, when the time is right. I'm here during this time. My name is Christina and I will be moderating this session. Thank you. So I'm just gonna take a few more seconds to get a few more people uh, to answer the questions and, and then we will get started. So as some of you are finishing this poll, I'd like to introduce you to Thaneeth, who is our facilitator today. Thaneeth is a Mississauga-based freelance artist. She creates impactful and emotional rich art using a variety of forms, including mixed media. Before moving to Canada, she was born in India and raised in the Middle East. With a background in architecture and interior design, her work embodies the flavors of several cultures and inspirations from her extensive travels. Her work reflects her feelings and emotions. She believes that art should be an experience which connects and communicates with her viewers and touches their deeper instincts. Thaneeth is also the founder of Canvas Stories, which hosts corporate events and art training in the greater Toronto area. So I'd like to introduce everybody to Thaneeth, our facilitator today. Just Hello, everybody. Thank you for the introduction, Christina. I am so excited. And since this is a one hour workshop, we will really start getting onto our work and start connecting. As I said, I love my art to connect with you all. So let's hope this is what we are doing. So before I start, I'll talk a little bit about the material so that you can all settle in with all that was uh, required for this workshop. So we need paper. So today I'm using the mixed media Canson paper. And um, this is pretty good and it takes in uh, quite a lot of water and everything, but you are free to welcome whatever paper you have, a watercolor paper 
or any other stuff or even a canvas if you would like to. And so if we keep a pencil handy, a eraser and um, Sharpies, um, a little thin one and a thick one, um, the ones you just get anywhere in the store, which is quite easily available and a couple of brushes that you are comfortable with and really depends on the size of the work that you are going to be doing. Since mine is just nine by 12, I would be using smaller brushes, but if you're working on a bigger piece, then um, you can use bigger brushes. I have a little pointy one and then um, a straight edge and a round edge one. So these are the different types of brushes I would be using. And then we need some water. I would highly recommend if you have a small container uh, to put in the water in a small container because um, this workshop in this painting, the control of your water, how much you add is really uh, important. So if you have some more control of how much you dip in your brush into the water, it would be great. Uh, then you need a washcloth, washcloth or paper towel and uh, that's it, and the paints, which I will talk about as I start. So I hope you've all got your materials ready and are as, as excited as I am. Okay, so as you can see, we are uh, going to be working with shapes. So in art, there are two types of shapes. There's geometrical shapes and there is organic shapes. So let's talk about the geometrical shapes, which most of us know. We've all done our mathematics and this is what we've learned. So these are the shapes that you would see in um, geometrical shapes. They are perfect, they are regular, they have straight lines and angles and points as well. But for today, we are going to be working with the organic shapes. So what are organic shapes? Organic shapes are something that have a natural look to it. As you can see, all these must be kind of giving you a feel of something from nature. They are flowy and they are curving. They are not sharp edged and they associate something to nature. For example, if you look at the green one, it kind of, it's not a perfect leaf, but it does remind me of a leaf. Maybe this brownie color here with a shape like this, it reminds me of a rock. And then we have this blue shape here, it reminds me of lake, but for you, maybe it reminds you something else. Then I have a nice round circle, which is yellow. This is reminding me of sun. So we have different, different shapes, green patches, the grass, the mountains and things that we see around us. So this is what we'll be focusing on today. Think about the shapes that you have around you, the trees, the, the grass, the mountains, the lakes, all that's in nature. So let's start by getting our paper ready and we will talk a little bit about our composition. So I'll move this one to my side here. And I'm going to grab my pencil and eraser. So this is the sheet I have. And what we talk about in composition for this specific uh, painting is where do we want to place our shapes? Where do we want to place our organic shapes? To make this really simple, I have taken four shapes here today. As you can see, this big one is almost as big as my hand. The second shape is a little smaller. The third shape is joining the two and again, smaller than the two others. And then I have a circle right here. So when we are doing our composition, I will start by drawing an imaginary, very light line with our pencil from top to bottom. Don't worry about straight or not straight because this is about just exploring shapes and enjoying it. Then I'm going to draw another line from the left to the right. You might not be able to see it very um, clearly because I'm doing very light lines, but it's just one straight line from top to down and then from left 
to the right. So you're centering your page. And now you can decide on your composition. You can follow along the shapes that I am suggesting, but if you really have another shape that you would like to do, you're most welcome. So for my first shape, I want something a bit big. It's almost as big as my hand. So let's say I do a little marking here to here. So this is leaving a couple of lines on top, a couple of space, like two finger space here and two finger space here. Now I'm going to draw this shape just like this. And it's curvy and let your pencil do the movement. Don't get restricted with the shape and the size that is flowing through you. Now with our imaginary straight line in the center that you can see, I want you to give a space of one finger. So we start from here, a shape, an outline, and I'm going to make it curvy, just curvy like this. You can do your own shapes. You can make it a little bit more curvy or whatever comes to you very natural. So this is our first shape that I have drawn. And then I'll be working on the second shape here on the right. Keeping in mind, I want a one finger space in between the two shapes. So I start with my second shape and just let it flow. You don't even need to raise or pick up your pencil, just let it flow. At any point you need to ask me something, please do so. You can write in the chat or you can ask me. Now, if I refer back to our painting here, there is a shape joining the two main shapes here. And that's a shape I was thinking of a rock. You could be thinking of something else. So I'm going to join both these shapes out here. And it's again, very natural, whatever comes, whatever flows, just enjoy it. There you are. It's, there's no right or wrong about, about drawing these shapes. Just let it flow. Think about the things that you see around you, the rocks, the mountains, um, the shapes, the leaves, the sun, whatever inspires you. So let's do our last shape, a circle right on the top here. Fini, if I have one question in the chat, and that is yes. where does your paint come from? Where does my paint come from? Yep. The paints are acrylic paints, and I'll talk about it once we start. I will just guide you. So once we've done the shapes, I will just start talking about our paints. Thank you. Okay. Now, you just need to rub these lines here because this is a shape joining the two big spaces here. So I'm going to use my razor and gently just erase that. And as well as our center line that we had drawn. So we are just left with the shapes. So take your okay. time and just erase it. I was actually asking where the painting came from, not the paints. Oh, the painting. This painting is uh, done by me and it is just an inspiration. Um, and uh, I will talk to you the, the why these compositions were done and when as we start. What was the main idea behind these paintings? Okay, I'm just going to dust all this away so that we don't have anything coming in our way. 
You can use your washcloth if you want, just to erase all of these. Okay. So now when you're choosing, I'll show you what colors I have used. I'm using acrylic colors. And this is golden okra. It's a yellow, any type of yellow would work. And then I am using a red, any type of red would work really. And uh, this one is a capmin. And then I have a rust burnt sienna. And I am using a green gray. So these are my four colors. Now, if you don't have these colors, I would encourage you to use any colors that you see in nature. You have your greens, your blues, your orange, your reds. So there's really no um, a reason that you have to follow the same color palette as mine. So here I have pulled out some of my paints. There is my yellow, my red, the raw umber, and the green, the green gray, and I've also added a little bit of black here. So let's start painting now. All right, so the main thing about this painting is to really do very dry painting and use water just to make it flowy enough. And we don't want it very watery because then it would go out of the shapes and it would be quite different. And we are trying to get a solid color look. So let's start with the lightest color that you have or you're planning to use. And I'm using my yellow for my left shape here. So I'm just going to dip it in, literally just dip it slightly into the water. And you can watch me how I'm doing it as well. And so Thania, yes. water, watercolor would not be um, uh, a good choice for this because you want those defined lines? Uh, yes, it will. I wouldn't say it is not right. You would get a different type of painting. So okay. if that is what you only have, I would say just do it. But you will not be able to get this solid look as I have done. And then when you did the, when you cut the paper in half and the methods you've used so far, would you use that same method no matter the size of the paper? Uh, you mean if you have a bigger paper, then how do you do your composition? Is that yes. what you're saying? Yes. So if your paper is bigger, then you could just increase the size. But basically, you're trying to leave a little bit of space on top, a bit of space on, on, the, on the bottom here and on the left and right. So it's really whatever size you have, it's absolutely fine. It's no issue at all. So I'll start with my yellow color. Is there another question? One other question is, um, Maria has a very bright yellow and she'd like to get it more of your yellow. What could she add to darken it? Uh, you can make it a bit orangey or something. You can add a little bit of red in it and see how it goes. Yeah, just a little bit. So what I'm trying to do here is to do an outline of our shapes. So if you watch me, I'm going to use the edge of my brush to do the outline, just like this. So if you see the left side of my brush is making the outline. That's why it's important to keep it as with less water as much as you can. You will add water when you feel it's drying up or it's not moving. So this is how we're going to do. And if you are going outside your line, that's okay because these are organic shapes, right? There's no firm straight lines to it. So I'm using my edge of my brush. And also I would be moving my paper. 
So if you have space around you, that's good. To keep this flow of my brush going. As you can see, I dip my brush into the paint, add water if I need, but otherwise I'm just using the paint as is, as solid as I can. Now, when I come to areas that are really edge, the edge is very fine and I won't be able to do it with my brush, I'm just going to leave it to do with the finer brush. And you can see I'm moving my paper. So just do that. There you go. And let the shapes come, come take form as you're doing it. So move your paper as you wish. If you are fine working as straight, then you can do it. But I like to move it. I get my curvy lines um, really well, I feel. And let's fill in the middle. So these are just solid colors. And my strokes, as you can see, are just up and down along the edge. And I would quickly do another coat on it just in the middle. And that's how it goes. Now, could I add another layer after it dries? Would that darken it more? It would, but on this specific shape, I am going to be doing my um, leaves like this one. So it needs to dry up. Um, but if you are planning to do more of these later on, um, you can let everything dry up a bit and then start doing it as well. So not too much paint, just let it be. Now let's start with our second sh shape, the second color I have. And you can either wash and use the same brush or you can use another new brush. It's really up to you. So I'm going to start with my gray green or you can even just do gray or you can even just do light green if you like whatever color suits you. And this is going to be the same uh, way. I'm going to start with the edge here. Just go smooth. Now, if you feel it's drying up, you will add the water. The consistency of each paint would be different. Um, this is a really solid color. I won't even need to do another coat. Now you can move your paper if you wish, or just go ahead. I'm going to move it a bit and start doing the lower part. This is a really dry, solid color. It's pretty nice. Everyone has their favorite colors. Okay, and as I said, the, the delicate part you can do later. Areas that you cannot reach with this brush, you can do it with a finer brush later, which I'll just show you. That's how it goes. Now, if you go outside your line, don't worry about it. I just did. So you just, I'm just creating it and adding it into my shape. It's a little delicate when you're doing this, but just relax. 
and enjoy the process, really. There's really nothing right or wrong about this uh, painting. It's just about adding the color, feeling the movements. And actually, this is all inspired by the elements of nature. Um, we have the, the fire, uh, we have the earth, we have the water and air. So this is a combination of everything. It's, it's about putting all that feeling onto your paper here. So if you've all finished your second uh, coloring, because each one would have a different size, um, so they would take different time. Um, I will start with my third color. Uh, I'm washing my brush and wiping it really well because I don't want it wet. And um, so let's start with my third color, which is the burnt sienna. I love this color. And we do the same technique. We just take uh, a minute just for some uh, some people to catch up. Is that okay? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. That's good. Um, you can now. Uh, I think uh, they. You can just you know send in a thumbs up that you are done, <laughs> and then we can proceed. Yeah. So these were inspired for um, a startup company here in Mississauga. And they are into, um, you know, um, organics and recycling and sustainable um, uh, kind of, uh, you know, innovative uh, new ideas uh, um, and uh, biodegradable. So they came to me and they said, could you create some artwork for their office? So we sat down, um, a lot of these shapes are in their logos and their backdrops and things like that. So this is how all these got inspired. The colors were all uh, from earth, whatever you see around us. The shapes were all from here. So they had a huge, uh, bigger meaning and the art was supporting it. So I created quite a few of these and we framed them. In the end, I can show you how, when we do our matting, how it looks too. So I would start with my third color. Is that okay? Can I start with my other color? Yeah, let's go. Yep. Okay. Um, as a facilitator, it's, we have to keep looking at our time. And that is really, really challenging. <laughs> so I'm doing the same technique again. And I'm going to move my paper. As you see, I have not used much paint for this project at all. You don't need much. There you go. The outline. Now I did add too much water, so I'm going to really wipe my brush uh, because I don't want it very watery. I always say art is intuitive problem solving. If you make me do the same thing, same art again, it would be different. And I would have different problems in each painting. I wouldn't say problem, challenges, I would say. And each one you'll be tackling different. I'm going to fill up the center and coat it really nice and even as much as you can. Trudy, you have your hand up. Do you have a question? Sorry, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I've finished with my um, third shape and um, I'm going to wash my brush or wipe it, whatever suits. 
and we will be working on our um, different, uh, the red color. We use a new brush. Let's see. So I have used red for the circle here. And I'm just going to paint that. I love all these colors that I'm using. These are kind of my favorite colors. Um, I'm sure all of you have different favorites and are using them. And the beauty of this painting is use what you like. And it's going to create art. Okay. Now, as you see, I do have some spaces that I've left, especially where they are meeting the shapes with different shapes. So I'm going to go in with a really fine tipped brush like this. So if you can grab that and just kind of finish areas that you have left and you've not been able to reach with your the other brush, the thicker brush. So I have my yellow here and I'm just going to finish it here. A little bit here. And uh, that, that I think was the only space. So I do have a little green here that I did not uh, fill up. So I'm going to just uh, use the green, the gray green and finish this edge here. That's it really. Yep, so I'll wait for others to finish this and then we'll start talking about our next step. Now, as I said, if you're working on a lot of these paintings and you want to do them large scale, small scale, uh, you can keep adding layers to it um, and make it really solid. But if you don't want to, sometimes I do like to see the textures uh, because it, it has more depth here, you know, a bit of dark and light. And it's a very natural thing that happened while I'm painting. So it's really um, up to you um, and uh, you can work on it. But these look beautiful when they are framed. Uh, behind uh, glass and uh, they, they really look nice, impressive. I had done bigger ones for this company and uh, four or five of them or six, I think there were six. Uh, and when they're put together, um, different shapes, different, uh, you know, uh, uh, colors and then the, the black leaves really bring it, brings it together. I'll just do that step now. I'm just waiting uh, for others to finish. And some of you can just uh, give me a thumbs up. I will start with my next process. Right, and I will get a paper. Okay. So I've moved my brushes as well. And let's see. Okay, I think we are good. I wish I could watch you all do it. That would be so satisfying. I'm just scrolling through to see <laughs> how many people are waiting. From who I can see, there seems to be. Yeah, yeah. Are we good to go? Um, we have 110 people, I'm just making sure. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we're good to go. Okay, so I'll just talk a little bit. I'll move this one and I'll just show you the, the really popping uh, shape that really brings this whole thing together are these black leaves here. These look so amazing. And this is where it's like free flow of whatever 
shape of leaves you want to do, big leaves, small leaves. You could have it this way if you like. You could have it the way I have done it. You could even have a few. I had done one with leaves coming from here. Um, I will actually show you the ones I had just to give you ideas and then we will start. So see this one. Um, again, I have used almost the same colors except for this popping green here. And look at this leaf here. Can you see how there are different leaves and it has just brought in the entire painting together. And um, there, there, there is a lot of element of grounding earth. That's what we are talking about. It's about a grounding. You feel grounded when you see this painting. It has roots to it. So this is one of the way I had done. You are very welcome to use what you like, um, the shape. There is another one here. See, I've just framed, I've put a mat around it. And you know what? I made an imaginary pot here. And uh, this, this uh, whatever leaves are just flowing, flowing into the, you could say the clouds or the sun or whatever shape you like. Again, it's grounded here, as you can see. So this is the concept we are trying to do. And you can see the amount of um, possibilities you have once you just know the basics. There's just no end to the amount you can create. So let's now see how we can do different types of leaves. So I have just done a little sketch here. So basically we are just going to draw. Um, I'm just showing you rough here and then we'll do it on our painting. So basically a curvy line that's going to go whatever your, wherever your pen is going to take. And I'll be using a Sharpie for our marking in our painting. Or let's do another one here. Now I've just alternate a few stems like this, just like this. And then we are going to draw the leaves, whatever shape comes comfortable to you. So you could do just the standard, you know, leaves like this, or you can leave your hand a little free, free in the sense it's going to take its shape. So it's going to take its shape. Look at these leaves. These are just going to different shapes. Even each leaf would be different from the other. So this is how I've done here. These are such really free flow type of leaves. And these are a little more traditional, the shape that we would normally draw. So really get comfortable to whatever shape you are. And we are going to do that into our painting here. So let's get our painting down here. And just to give us a guideline of the curve that we want, Yes, I'm just going to show you. So you can use your pencil first. So I'm going to start where this one is. It's just starting from the center shape from here. And then I'm going to draw a line, a pencil line, which is curvy. So let's do it with our pencil. Grab your pencil and let it flow. There's really no right or wrong about this. So let's do it. I know you would find it a little, ooh, what if we do it wrong? There's really no wrong or right here. I have just drawn it. If you can see, I have a bit of guideline here. What if the paint hasn't dried yet? If your paint hasn't dried up, you can start using a black paint if you want to or you can use Sharpie. You have both options ready. So I can show you a little bit with the uh, black paint and a little bit with the Sharpie. So you have both options here. I will start with my Sharpie and I'll also continue with my uh, black paint. So once you have just drawn a simple guideline with your pencil, it doesn't matter if this is wet or dry because you will still get your marking there. And with your thin Sharpie, I'm going to start outlining it. So I'll go over my 
pencil line. Doesn't matter if it doesn't come too well, we're going to go stronger over it. And we're going to have these few lines to guide us where we want our leaves to go. Just like this. And with the same Sharpie, we are going to draw our leaves. Again, whichever style you like. I'm going to draw just simple leaves as I had shown in the other paper with my Sharpie. There we go. Just play with it. These are alternating and just leave the end free. You don't have to do the, um, okay. Now I will grab a, a brush and I'll show you how we can even do with our black paint in case you want to do it with a black paint. So I'm going to just dab it, dab my pointy brush into water, grab some, grab some paint. The black paint, just coat it really well. And you can draw it too, just like this. So you're free to do whatever suits you. If you want to do it with your black paint, you can do, or you can do it with the Sharpie. So I'll leave these two designs here in case you want to do something like this. Just let it flow, let it keep flowing. Okay. So I'm going to start um, with my thicker Sharpie and we're going to fill in these leaves here. So you can grab your Sharpie and fill in these shapes here. You'd be amazed the different shapes that come in. Now, those of you who want to do it with the black paint, you can do that as well. how it's done. You do get some special pens um, that you could use. Um, they're called Posca pens and you get them in Michaels here in Canada or even other stores. They have really, really great pigment and um, so you can work on those. Uh, you can work on your paintings with those pens as well. But the Sharpies also do a quite a good job. Now you can make this as <clears throat> intricate as you want. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can have a lot of leaves. You can just have few leaves. You can have just a, a, a few as I have done. In this one, I had quite a few of them. So it really depends on how many you want and what you want to do. And keep working on it with your fine and thick brush as you want. If you want to tidy up some lines, some edges, I'm just going to thicken up the main branch here. 
with my fine tip. Depending on the size you're working, you might want to just work with the thick Sharpie. So it really depends on your size and what impact you want. But the beauty is that you can create whatever shapes you want here with your leaves and they look so beautiful. have any questions please go ahead and ask me while others are finishing and working on it So Trudy is saying some of her light pencil lines are showing through the yellow paint. Is it possible to erase them at this point? Um, uh, you should let it dry first before you erase it, because if you have any uh, wet paint there, then it would smudge everything. So just uh, wait for it. Um, you have a couple of options. You can uh, paint over it if you wish to uh, with another coat or you can erase it as well. Thank you. The colors that I have used are acrylic colors by Amsterdam, by Liquitex and uh, basics and things like that. So um, these don't, uh, are mostly quite solid colors. So they do pretty well. Um, when, you, when, if you are an artist, I'm sure you know there, if you're using um, translucent, translucent colors are those colors where you would be seeing if there's anything behind it. For example, this is a higher brand painting um, uh, color from Golden. And when you buy them, you would see there are three strokes right here in black. And then the color is just a stroke of that color is put over it. So when you can see through it, it means it's a, it's a kind of translucent color. So whatever you have behind this, uh, you would be able to see it. So for this kind of uh, painting, I have used the solid colors. Um, the translucent color would give, it's not that you cannot use it, but it would give you a different effect completely. I will show you how it looks with the mat and it kind of, um, then you can see why composition is important and planning it so that um, you know you know where your shapes are going and how well it looks grounded as well. Yes, absolutely, opaque paints. Translucent and opaque paints. Okay, so I'll just show you how it kind of really looks gorgeous once it is. it has a frame around it here. See how it gets, um, just the composition just stands out. Um, so you can buy these kind of mats anywhere in any of the uh, art stores and put a mat around it. Um, this one is, I think, 14 by, I can't remember, maybe 10 or something, or 11, 11 by 14 or something. And then you put it around it and frame it. It looks so gorgeous. It just puts it together, the concept, everything. Um, I can show you the one which I had done earlier. If you put that one as well, 
different types and uh, you can do a combination of big ones, small ones, frame them. And as you can see, uh, I didn't haven't even used much paints, um, just solid opaque paints and a couple of brushes. And uh, this is what you can do wonders with it, right? Kathy is wondering if you've used, I think it's pronounced Cassian paint. Uh, Cassian, I'm not sure about that. I have used these uh, Liquitex um, Basic, and this is the Burnt Sienna, and they're mostly opaque. Now each one will finish at a different time because of the amount of coloring you guys have to do. If it's a big shape, small shape or whatever. Um, but um, in the end, this is how it's going to look. Um, somebody was asking about mindfulness. So yes, so, um, when you are observing things around you, the nature, um, uh, you know, you are at the moment, you are kind of looking around, gazing at things around you, uh, the colors that would inspire you, and uh, it, it puts you into that moment. So this is really a painting that puts you into the moment. It's so much about mindfulness. It's about, you know, uh, being in the moment and creating without any stress, uh, without any uh, really firm or rigid shapes. You're just flowing with it. Um, the bigger you do, the more movement with your hands would create amazing, amazing shapes. You can practice them if you want on bigger, bigger pieces and just play with organic shapes. Um, you would create these beautiful shapes that you know you might have never thought you could do them. And then working with the colors that you see in nature. So it, it kind of focuses you on things, pleasant things around you. It's a very pleasant kind of a, a painting. It makes you feel happy makes you feel at the moment. I hope you've all felt that way. I hope you are enjoying it, the shapes, the colors, the sizes. And uh, I wish I could have put some music on. It would have been great. So what I would love to do is if you are done, I'd love yes. to get a photo of everybody holding up their art. Um, if you don't want to be in this photo, you can either hold it up in front of your face or you can keep your camera off. And the photo is going to be used for archival purposes as well as on our social media to show how amazing this workshop was. So I am going to do that if everybody is comfortable. If you do want to share your artwork, you can hold that up and oh then my God, I'm just going to do that so that way Faneeth can also see. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, they're lovely. And we do have a oh, lot of people cute. attending. Just give me a few minutes to take these photos. And I love the different colors that everybody's chosen. Yes, love that. This is what it is about. Choose your colors and go for it. I just love this. It's so beautiful. I love the moon there. I wish I could see each one and talk about it. <laughs> These are gorgeous. The shapes of leaves and the other colors. Oh my goodness become so creative. You guys are so creative. Wonderful. And there was a question if you could share your website in the chat for them. Um, I have a Facebook page called Canvas Stories. 
Um, and uh, I am on Instagram by the name of Thaniet. And I am in the making of a website, which is my mission for this month. So I'm getting there. So you can find me Canvas Stories on Facebook and on Instagram as Thaniet. My name, T-H-A-N-I-A-T-H. -H. I'm just going to grab the Facebook link and pop it in here for everybody. Yeah, I was going to say we had the best teacher, so, you know, that's oh, what I'm, that's <laughs> we do. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you all enjoyed it. <laughs> it's a different way of teaching. We are trying to learn as well and get there and um, and I really have to thank um, Art Gallery of Mississauga for hosting these beautiful events. Um, even I look up into them and I sometimes enroll and I say, oh, it's just de-stresses me. I just want to be there, paint with everybody, you know? So it's, it's amazing. It's, I'm really thankful. Thank you, Christina. And uh, thank you for so many of you who've come here on this beautiful day, art. I have been using art for healing, art for everything, and especially at this time. And I would encourage you all to use it too. Thank you so much, Dania, for facilitating this amazing workshop. I've put her Facebook page and her Instagram in the chat so that way everyone can click there and be able to follow her. This has been amazing. You are amazing, Thania. Everyone attending from literally around the world. We have Japan, we have Scotland, we have all over the Middle East. I cannot believe how amazing this workshop has been. And thank you so much for allowing me to moderate this. I hope you guys thank all you. have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much, everybody. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Are you going to share? Did you record this? Are you going to share it? Or not? Yes. So this has been recorded and it will be shared on YouTube once it is uploaded. Unfortunately, I do have fairly slow internet, so it might take a, a day. Um, I will email all attendees who have registered with the YouTube link in case you either want to review this again or even have a painting party with some family and friends virtually. Thank you. Have a wonderful